Hey everybody, what's going on? Josh here with Scrapyard Films, and today I'm showing you step two of my Mix Play Mixer Interactive tutorial. If you didn't see the first one, if you're coming into this hot right now, or cold I should say, um, in the description below I'll leave a link to the first video so you can understand where we are and how we got there. So, but if you're coming just from the other video, let's go ahead and get started. So we have just created our button right here. It doesn't do anything. You can click it. It makes it has this is a test and that's all it is. So that's our button. Let's make that play a sound. We can minimize mixer and then we have Firebot. Let's load that up. So this is our first button. If we click edit, we'll see a bunch of little things we could do here. Now button text, we'll just leave this blank because I'm going to assume you want to make this look good, so you'll probably use an image as the button's face. So we don't want any kind of text overlaying that image. So we're going to leave this blank. Our tooltip is still right here. This is a test. And if you change this and then save it and then resync your board, whatever Mixer has on its website is going to replace back what you put here. So you don't have to mess with the tooltip here. Um, spark cost here. These are all almost like temporary values if you change them. Cooldown, this is something that you know you really want to utilize so nobody's spamming it, especially if they're doing sound. So let's just say like 30 seconds. Threshold means this button won't activate unless it's clicked a certain amount of times. I don't know the use for that off the top of my head, but I just leave it blank. Permissions, this is basically when it says no permissions, that means you don't need any permission to hit this button. If you select it on group, that means you have to be assigned to a specific group to press this button. Individual, only one person can press this button. You can click that and then put in that username. Group, you can see which group they're a part of, and then they can click that button. But none will be good there. Other, you can make it an active button or an inactive button. Show in chat feed, write what it says. Whether or not you want to see the alert is in the chat feed when somebody clicks the button. Skip logging means it's not going to be put in the history or the log file of them clicking this button. And then we come down here to the fun part, effects. So you can test your effects with this little play button and you can do copy and paste effects with little three dots. But new effects is what we click and we want to go ahead and scroll through all these. We have a ton to go through. An API button is for programmers. If you make a custom button that you wrote in code, you can integrate that. Celebration, it has fun default effects. Looks like fireworks is something that's a default effect that you can use on there. Change group, it's it's pretty confusing here because change group is what you use to change scenes. Like the main menu we saw in the last video where I had, you know, vi casual viewer, patron, or subscriber, you would change them into a group. And because it's a little hard to explain right now, we'll go into it in the future videos and, you know, you'll understand then. Change scene basically useless from what I can see because that's the one you're thinking oh yeah change scene I want to go to that other menu but it doesn't work like that for some reason don't know why they named it that way but change group is what you're gonna use to actually change scenes chat you can have it either whisper to somebody or it can pop up somebody use that button or something you can make it say anything when that button is clicked clear effects means just anything going on let's say you have an effect that lasts 14 seconds Somebody can click that button and whoosh, wipes it all out. Cooldown, you can program this button to start a cooldown on other buttons. Delay is used to put in between effects that you layer up here. So let's say you, if you put in like four sounds, if you play it, it's gonna play all four sounds at the exact same time. You'll have to put a sound, then a delay, and then a sound, then a delay to play them back to back to back to back. Dice, roll dice in chat, that's some sort of interactive deal that the bot can do. I haven't used it yet, so it could be cool. Maybe I'll check that out later. Effect group, group multiple effects to be treated as one. So good for random effect use. So if you have like nine buttons all looking like a dial pad and you can click them, they can all do random things or something like that. Game control, you can emulate keyboard and mouse clicks. HTML, you can display custom HTML on the overlay. Play a sound, a random effect. You can just put like 10 effects there and it'll just do a random thing. Show event. I haven't used that one yet, but send an event to the event list is what it does. I haven't messed with it, so I wouldn't use it. Show image. This is what we saw earlier where an image overlays, and you can give it a bunch of custom parameters of, you know, the custom size. You could be a local file, a URL from image hosting site, custom area on the screen, duration, 
fade in, fade out. You can do bounces in. It has a lot of things you can do for pictures. Set custom dimensions. It's really cool right there. Show text, basically the same thing. You can put a custom text come up when they press it. Show video, same thing. You can make it play video, YouTube, local video, right there. And these ones are more like, you know, reset buttons or private buttons, but you can toggle connection to Firebots mixer services. Uh, you can do an update button, which basically, I guess, if you wanted to press this button and then everything now costs 20,000 sparks, you can make that happen. Write text to file can be like something like you're keeping a log of how many times that's being used. So you just choose like a doc file on your computer and then the text that every time this gets pressed, it says, oh, that person pressed that button. You can make that happen on every single button if you wanted to keep a log of how many buttons were pressed or whatever. You know, there's a lot of uses for all these different things, but we're just going to do one simple one right now and we're going to play a sound. So I'm going to choose a file right here and I have a special effects arsenal of stuff. We're gonna do an air horn, because who doesn't want to hear an air horn blast? And so if you wanted to test the air horn, you can do that. And that was loud. So we can drop that way down. And that's not bad right there. So then we hit add, and that's good. We hit save changes. Now this button plays the sound. And because if we look down here in the connections, it's all still linked together. We could load back up Mixer. And we can click the button. And it has a cooldown of 30-ish seconds, and it played an air horn. And so we just made a button do something. So one thing I want to show you, though, is that thing I talked about earlier in the other video about the size of that button. See, we made it really, really big. And so when you have a shrinked screen like this, your buttons won't show up if they're huge. They'll just kind of disappear. So if you drag it out, you see our button comes back right here. So that's something you got to watch out is make your buttons smaller. Or if you have a ton of buttons, some are going to be missing if you have a shrink to screen like this. And of course, if you want to test your button, you can do that by either clicking it right here like we just did or pressing the play button. And then it just plays it without doing the cooldown. It's just a test button. And so that's going to wrap it up for this video on how to make our button do something. In the next episode, you're going to learn something else about this. And eventually, at the end of all these episodes, you're going to have a fully interactive menu with buttons with pictures that do a ton of things like I showed you in the very first video. So thanks for watching. If that helped you out, be sure to like and subscribe because that'll really help me out. I'm trying to reach my goal currently of 5,000 subscribers on YouTube, so maybe you can help me hit that goal. And I'll see you guys in the next video.